Okay, let's uh, Dr. cover this uh, because this is chapter chapter 10, you know, just to finish, finish this. This uh, formation of halohydrin. Halohydrin means you have a halogen and you have a uh, what we call a hydroxyl group. Okay, so this reaction you are using a halogen, chlorine or bromine. This is different from halogenation. Last time you react with chlorine and without water. Now this is in the in the, in the presence of water. Eh? So in the presence of the water, the water will act as a nucleophile because there is so many so called your reaction is carried in the water. Eh? So many molecules of water. So water is a nucleophile instead of halide. You still remember the first step of your uh, reaction. If you have a double bond, okay, and you have a chlorine, what happened? Okay, this uh, so-called uh, what happened? This attack, this and this one form a, a a new bond, isn't it? Form a new bond. Then you will get a something like this. Cl, this one break, so you have a positive here. Okay, so this is the mechanism for the first step. If you are using the halogen, okay. So now this is using water instead of. Of course, you still produce chloride. Okay, you still produce chloride, and it depends on which one is more substituted. Let's say they have an R group. This is H. This is H. This is H. This is slightly more positive in this case eh? because this carbon is more stable. So your chloride will attack this carbon. This is what you have learned last time. But now in the halohydrin formation, uh, the water acts as a nucleophile. I mean you have a water now, you have a H2O. This can be act as a nucleophile as well. Okay. So let's see. The mechanism is very similar and it will produce anti-addition, an anti-product also. Okay, so as a product is Makonikov, that means it, your Cl added to more H. In this case, after the attack, the attack here, this bond break, the Cl added to the H. Uh, uh, okay, so the product is Makonikov and anti serial chemistry, eh? anti addition. Okay, you will get one up, one down. Later we will show you. So, in halohydrin formation, Although the combination of Br2 and H2O effectively form bromohydrin from alkane, other reagents can also be used. That means in the halohydrin uh, reaction, you use halogen in water. Okay, it normally it's bromine. Okay, so bromohydrin are also formed with N bromosaccinimide NBS in aqueous DMSO. This is the NBS. So in your exam, you might be only given the short form. Okay, you have alkene react with MBS in uh, DMSO aqueous and ask you for the what is the product formation. Eh? Written like this, then you will get a bromohydrin, which you have a bromo group and OH group. Okay, and we are going to show you uh, the mechanism as shown before here, as shown on a whiteboard. Okay, it depends. So the first step is the same with halo, uh, what we call halogenation. Halogenation. So uh, the second step here, after the forming formation of this uh, uh, intermediate, okay, you have to decide which is more uh, positive, slightly more positive, eh? because this is more stable because it has a electron donating group here. So your uh, new profile in this case is a water will attack this, okay, will attack this. And uh, I think something wrong with the arrow. Eh? This is breaking here. Okay, so you break here, not not from here. Eh? Break here, the, the other way. Okay, so we will get this. Okay, then removal of after you form this, of course you remove one of the H. Then we will form a OH group. Okay, so so this is the what we call the product. So let's say you have a double bond you will get an anti-addition. Anti-addition means you have to show one up, one down or one down, one up. Okay, this is the uh, product of anti-addition. Yeah? Uh, if your bromide is pointing up, your nucleophile will attack from behind. Okay, if your bromide is pointing inside, your nucleophile will attack on the opposite side. 
So this is what we call the anti-stereochemistry eh, in halo hydrogen formation. Because the bridge halonium iron, this is called the halonium iron. Okay, this is called halonium iron. Uh, is open by backside attack. Okay, is open mean. Let's say for example, uh, you will attack from. In this case, you will attack from the the behind. Okay, from behind, opposite side. So, uh, addition of X and OH occur in a anti fraction and trans product are formed. Eh? So, you get a, a trans product in this case because this is a cyclic alkane. So, one up, one down. Eh? One down, one up. This is also called a, a trans product, eh? anti addition product. So, with unsymmetrical alkene, the preferred product has the Electrophile X bonded to the less substituted carbon and the nucleophile H2O bonded to the more substituted carbon as we have just explained in the slide here. Okay, so as you can see, your Cl now bonded to a more H, okay, with the carbon with more H, which is following the Markovnikov rules, if you like to say, although this is not H, okay, and your uh, OH will be attached to, uh, attached to the other carbon with a uh, more substituted carbon okay so as you can see from here so your product this product is formed br attached to carbon with more h oh in this case attached to a more substituted uh, carbon here okay so this product is formed not this one so it's mainly from this product i think it's stereo uh, specific in this case eh? if only form one stereo chemistry this is called stereo specific Eh? This is a question 40 in your test 2, isn't it? Asking you what is stereoselective. That is stereoselective means you form one product more than the other. Eh? One stereo uh, product more than the other. Maybe one is 70%, one is 30%. That is called stereoselective. When you say stereospecific, it only specifically form one product. Okay, maybe 99 to 100%. So you got your answer correct? For your question 40 in your test 2 okay doctor mentioned it isn't it in the last last week class at the end of the class giving tips to you see whether you pay attention or not okay so halohydrins used in synthesis so as you can see you can use for example you will form a, a double bond eh? at the end you want to form a metal uh, what we call you want to form a double bond so from this starting material Okay, you use whatever bromine, in this case a chlorine, okay, chlorine in water, then you get a halohydrin formation in the anti section. After that, the next step is, is what? You using base, okay, attack the H, it will produce a O negative here, and the no O negative will form the uh, epoxide, eh? epoxidation, okay, this is what, what, what do you call? Ether, what Williamson synthesis, eh? something like this, isn't it? Then after that, after this step, uh, you go one more step, you form the, the double bond O. Eh? This is the what we call we use halohydrin in the in the synthesis step. This is how you change from one functional group to the other functional group. Okay, so this will be a we call it total synthesis. So all the uh, reaction that you learn. Is actually want to put uh, is for total synthesis. Many times in the lab, we want to produce something. It is not only one step reaction. It can involve many step, ten step, maybe thirty step also is possible. So you have to change from one functional group to the other functional group. Okay, addition or whatever. Uh. So how about this? Uh, if you want to convert, this is what we call retro synthesis. Uh. If you want to convert hydroxyl group to two Br group. Okay, so this is a starting material that you have, and this is the desired product you want to produce. There are many missing steps here, maybe one, maybe two, and you will ask in the exam how to produce that this product. Can you propose a, a, a what we call a synthesis step? Okay, this is what we call retro synthesis. Retro synthesis, you have to work back from Br negative. How can you make this Br negative? Uh, no, not be a bit. Dibromo compound. How? Of course, it's from the 
addition of alkene, is it? And how to produce alkene from alcohol, uh, dehydration. Okay, so this is very simple, only two steps. Okay, so you have it in your mind how to do it. So in the exam, you will be tested like this type of question. Okay, propose a synthesis step to produce the, the product. Then we have to remember the reagent use. Okay, what is the reagent used for converting alcohol to alkene? Okay, what? Dehydration. Eh? You use what? H2SO4. Eh? You need to heat the H2SO4. Then we become an alkene. Then how to convert alkene to dibromoalkane? alkene? Uh, to act with the Br2. Okay, so you already got that. Uh, this is how from the, this you work back. Eh? This is what we call retrosynthesis. Working backward from the product to determine the starting material from which it is made is called retrosynthetic analysis. Okay, retrosynthetic analysis. Retro means working backward. Okay, so now if working backward, now you see you want to produce this, this must come from a alkene, react with the bromine. Okay, then how to produce alkene? From alcohol, then you have to use H2SO4. Okay, H2SO4. Actually, you need to put a triangle there to show heat. Eh? So, this is how you produce uh, the, the product. Eh? You can try uh, you, the exercise in your book. Eh? So, in the exam, you will expect question like this. Okay, not very straightforward question, but a, a little bit tricky, but not difficult. It involves your understanding. Okay, <coughs> how to produce the, the product. Ah, uh, that's it. Eh? this is this uh, chapter, chapter ten. Okay, so we are moving to chapter eleven. Please sign your attendance. Okay, now we will continue with chapter eleven. Alkyne. Eh? what is alkyne? Triple bond. Eh? alkyne means you have triple bond. Alkene, you have double bond. Alkyne, you have triple bond. You have also come across of alkyne before, is it? How to, how to synthesize alkyne? Eh? It's from geminal and vicinal uh, di, dichromide or dibromide. Okay, dichromide or dibromide. dibromide. Alkyne contain a carbon-carbon triple bond. Terminal alkyne. Terminal mean is at uh, here. This is called terminal alkyne attached to a H. Okay, attached to an H. Have the triple bond at the end of the carbon chain. So that the hydrogen atom is directly bonded to a carbon atom of the triple bond. Eh? This is the carbon atom of the triple bond. The H bonded to the C. Eh? This is called terminal. Terminal means at the end. Alkyne. Internal alkyne. Internal alkyne. Eh? This is internal alkyne. Okay. This is the alkyne group. It was like sandwiched by the two alkyl group. Okay. So this is in the middle. Eh? Uh, not only not not in the middle, but it's internal. Okay. Internal alkyne. So an alkyne has a general molecular formula of Cn, H2n minus two. Okay. So what is the degree of unsaturate, un unsaturation for alkyne? What is the degree of unsaturation for alkyne? Two. Eh? Also tested you in the exam. Maybe not alkyne. Can you do the question in the test too? I directly take out from the note. Your note. Eh? So I just want to see whether you study the note or not. Okay, the answer is there. Okay. So giving it four fewer hydrogen than the maximum possible for the number of carbon present. Eh? So the alkene, alkene, eh? is HCN H2N plus two. This is H2N minus two. So minus four hydrogen. Okay, it has two double bond and degree of unsaturation is two. Okay. Does the triple bond introduce two degree of unsaturation? So, also you must be able to read, okay, your uh, alkyne. For example, uh, I show you here. This is also in your exam, in your test. If I show this, how many carbon are there? Huh? Eh? Four eh? is four, okay? Because alkyne is linear shape, okay? So you have one carbon here, 
One carbon here, one carbon here, and one carbon here. Okay, there are four, not not two uh, or not three. Okay, you must be able to read this. Eh? So as uh, this is what no, this is the simplest, simplest al uh, alkyne we call acetylene. If we want to draw that one, you only draw this. But eh? isn't it for this form? But this is a bit. No, normally people don't draw it because it's a bit confusing. So you prolong it. You draw a two H. Ah, so people know there's only two C. Okay. If not, what is that triple line? Okay. So this is the what we call the simplest uh, alkyne. We call it acetylene. Okay, acetylene, or sometimes we call it ethane, eh? because methane, ethane. Eh? So how to name alkyne? Replace A N E with Y N E. Okay. Did I mention that just now? Maybe the next slide. Okay. So this is what we call sp hybridized. Sp hybridized in your double bond is what sp two, is it? Double bond. Double bond is this carbon is sp two. Okay. If a, if a alkene, this is sp three. Okay. So alkyne is sp sp only. Okay. Bukan sungai petani, eh? Okay, SP. Okay, this is SP. If you say SP, if you compare SP3, SP2, and SP, which one have the most S character? Yeah, SP have the most S character, almost fifty percent. Okay. So, SP, yeah. Okay, now you have. Uh, this is how you overlap. You have two p orbital. Overlap to form two pi bond. Okay, one overlap from uh, here, the other one from the side way. So you have two double bond here, eh? two electron cloud. This is how you represent the uh, alkyne. Eh? That's why it's a linear shape now. It's a linear shape. Okay, it's not bent. Okay. So bond dissociation and di bond dissociation energies of the C uh, C single bond in the ethylene. No, not C single bond. Uh, C C C bond. Okay, C C bond in the ethylene. In ethylene, you have one sigma bond and two pi bond. Okay, and acetylene. Acetylene mean this is uh, uh this is as uh this is acetylene. Eh? no, this is ethylene. This is ethylene. This is acetylene. Okay, this is ethylene. This is acetylene. Okay, ethylene only have one sigma bond and one pi bond. Acetylene have one sigma bond and two pi bond. If you want to know the pi bond of the uh, acetylene, then you minus okay the bond energy for ethylene. Then you get the bond energy for the second pi bond in the acetylene. Okay, very confusing, eh? Okay, but but this is very uh, this is clear enough, eh? So triple bond minus double bond, you get the the bond energy for the second double bond, okay. So, like transcycloalkene, you still remember transcycloalkene? Cycloalkene is not stable until you have eight, uh, what we call uh, eight cyclo transalkene, okay. So it's the same for the alkyne, like transcycloalkene, cycloalkyne with small ring are unstable because it will create a lot of uh, strain. Okay, let's see. This is cyclooctane. That means eight, eight carbon. Okay, why you need eight? Because more than the eight, you will create a lot of uh, strain here on the bond. Okay, so you only when you have more, you have nine and ten, then the the strain is less. Okay, so the carbon change must be long enough to connect the two end. Of the triple bond, this is the two end of the triple bond. Okay, without introducing too much strain. Okay, cyclooctane is the smallest isolable cycloalkyne. So it decomposes upon standing at room temperature after a short time. Okay, I mean it's still very reactive. You can isolate it after you put it under room temperature. It will just decompose, become other thing because of the molecular structure is just too strained, eh? not stable. So now we come to the naming uh, of our al alkyne. It's very similar to alkane. Okay, the only difference is when you see the triple bond. Okay, you change A and E uh, to 
y and e okay then if you have two triple bond you call it I don't know how to pronounce uh, pronounce di diine okay or triines okay and so forth triene I think huh? dienes and triens uh, then become dienes and triens huh? so you have to be sure huh? in one is alkene one is alkyne okay di diene oh, no, maybe okay okay so compound with both double bond and triple bond are named N9 okay so someone can come with a new English name okay N9 okay the change is number to give the first side first side eh? it doesn't matter whether you have double bond or triple bond the double bond have to the, the, the what we call unsaturated bond have to name first take for example okay take for example Let's say you have this. Okay. Okay. How to name it? The number. Huh? Which one have to name first? Okay. So you have to name this first. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Name alkene as a as the uh, the first one. Okay. But normally you don't come up with this type of question. If we ask you also objective okay objective so you can know how to decide where to choose okay so the first the uh, first unsaturated bond have to name the lowest number okay so the simplest alkyne acetylene name in IUPAC system is ethyne as I said ethyne eh, from ethane okay it's more often called acetylene it's common name eh? the two carbon alkyl group derived from acetylene is called an Tau nine group, okay. It tau nine group, okay. Sometimes we take this as a substituent, okay, as a substituent. Let's see the example, okay. In this case, same with alkane, you have to find the longest carbon chain. Then decide uh, the the lowest number for alkyne. So where where is the longest carbon chain? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's M, it's a heptine. Okay, but your it's a three heptine. Okay, so you name your parent compound as a three heptine. Three is the position of your triple bond, or you can also name hep three ion, like alkene. Okay, okay. So after that, you name the functional group. One, two means two. You have a methyl group. Three, four, five, five. You have another methyl group. So it's two five dimethyl three heptine. Everyone can see, okay? So you just if you cannot see, I think you're able to see lah. Eh? So yeah. okay, one two three four five six seven. See, then two have a methyl group, five have a methyl group. So two five dimethyl three heptine. Okay. In the second example, the alkyne is used as a substituent. Okay, so you name cyclohexane as a parent compound and it tie now cyclohexane. Okay, it tie now cyclohexane. Or I think it's not wrong if you name it cyclohexal uh, ethyne. Okay, cyclohexal ethyne. I don't think it's wrong. Huh? It's correct. Both also correct. Okay, so how about this? Huh? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's one, three hexyl diene. Okay, one, three hexyl diene. As I maybe eh, although I think it's correct, but not be necessarily correct. You might have a rules. If you the rules could be the cyclohexane is the parent compound. Need to double check. Eh? let me go back and double check. Theoretically, it's it's not wrong, but maybe in the IUPAC you have so many rules, so you have to get familiarized with the rules. Okay, so the, this one, uh, as you you can go back and you can work it out, uh, uh, it's not difficult. So the physical property, the physical properties of alkyne resemble those of hydrocarbon of similar shape and molecular weight. Uh, that means it's similar to ethane and ethane. Okay, if you have ethane, okay, 
alkai have low melting point and boiling point. Melting point and boiling point increase as the number of carbon increase. Eh? It's the same with other because of Van der Waals force. Okay, alkai are soluble in organic solvent and insoluble in water. Okay, insoluble in water. So acetylene, the smallest alkali, is the colorless gas that burn in oxygen to form car carbon dioxide and H two O. Okay. The combustion of acetylene release more energy per mole of product form than any other hydrocarbon. Okay, if you burn alkali and alkene, uh, this produce more energy because you have to uh, break. Uh, maybe the bond breaking, uh, it release energy. It burn with a very hot flame and is an excellent fuel. Okay, so this is this a physical property of acetylene. How about synthesis of alkyne? Uh, this we have gone through before. Okay, using the geminal or uh, vicinal dihalide uh, produce an alkyne. As in this case, when you have learned in don't know what chapter already, chapter ten or chapter nine, eh? you using the sodium amide, eh? sodium amide, a strong base, okay, and you have to use two equivalent. So bitter elimination reaction, remove one of the H, remove one of the Cl. After that, you form the double bond, remove another H, remove another Cl. So it involves two steps. The first step happen very quickly okay but the second step the, the, uh, because alkene is more stable so you require a lot of energy also okay so you need to carry out the reaction in a very vigorous condition okay the first step minus hs is easy to form the vinyl halide the second step removal of the hf from the vinyl halide require very strong base and high temperature eh? so you need to use a strong base like this Sodium, amide, or uh, this one potassium third butoxide, okay, in DMSO. Two equivalent, eh? like in this case, you remove eh, two HBr out and you form eh, a triple bond. This is what you have studied eh, in the previous chapter, okay, not something new to you. And, uh, or you can use a strong base, this is a strong base, potassium hydroxide. In a very high temperature, you will still produce a, a triple bond from a dibromide. Okay, so molten KOH or alcoholic KOH at 200 Celsius favor an internal alkyne. Uh, this is a condition to produce internal alkyne. Okay, so you need to remember. Molten, uh, molten means you melt it. Okay, potassium hydroxide, if I'm not mistaken, is a solid form. Okay, so you just like sodium hydroxide. Okay, you you put high temperature, it, it melt become a, a a solution, a liquid. Okay. So sodium amide, eh, as this in this first case, at one hundred fifty degree, followed by water, favor a terminal alkyne. Okay, this is a two condition to produce alkyne. One favor or prefer internal alkyne. One favor. Uh, uh, terminal alkyne. Okay, very straightforward. Eh? So in uh, especially in the first year, of the organic chemistry is very straightforward. You just have to study and remember. Okay, understand it correctly. So the reaction for alkyne is also additional reaction because it's a unsaturated carbon. Eh? Just like in the case of uh, alkene. Okay, it's an addition. Electrophilic addition reaction. Okay, so for alkyne is the same like alkene. Alkyne undergo addition reaction because they contain relatively weak double bond. The double bond in alkyne is even weaker than the alkene eh? because they have three. Okay, they are very loosely held. Two sequential reaction can take place. First one is the addition of one equivalent of reagent to form an alkene. Okay, for example, you react with HX with alkyne, the HX will be added to the alkyne. Okay? Then, which can then add the second equivalent of reagent to yield a product having four new bonds. In this case, using HXY to represent, okay, 
the first step of reaction is a uh, you can produce E or Z product okay then second one added into here you form a four bond highlighted here in red okay so two step addition because you have two double bond okay so these are the example you can use uh, HX okay added here either if you are two equivalent so X two X added to H added or you use halogen halogenation four X is added or you use this H2O in the presence of H2SO4 and this mercury uh, sulfide, sulfate and you have this we will go through one by one eh, later but these two you should be quite uh, not new to you this is also not new to you see using this bromo hydro hydrobromoration oxidation eh, this is almost the same process but you have learned before okay so I think we stop here lah. Okay, we continue tomorrow.